Hey, what's up? Welcome to Mindful. I'm Darby, and this is my friend Jeremy. What's going on? How are you, Darby? I'm great. How are you? You know what? I'm living the dream. Wow. <laughs> Glad you're here. We're both hoodie bros today. That's nice. So yeah. we got I'm representing the, memo. the campus. Yeah. Whoa. Okay, Greek. we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. I'm we'll get there. I don't have anything interesting, but <clears throat> I am pumped that Jeremy's here because, you know, on Mindful, we like to talk to really smart people. I don't know if you know that, so you're kind of in a really important oh, seat right now. But the whole point of what we're doing here is our minds are full. There's a lot going on in the world, a lot going on on the internet, a lot happening. And if we're not careful, we can miss like what the most important thing is mm -hmm. to do right now. So that's why we're trying to be mindful of that one thing. So okay. you're going to be our one thing expert today. Oh boy. I'll no do my pressure. Best. Okay. Okay. So my question is, there's this really weird verse in scripture where Jesus is talking and he says some weird stuff. Okay. And so I'm going to read it just so we're all on the same page. And then you're going to answer some questions about it. Okay, let's do You it. ready? Okay, yes. I'm going to read it. So this is Matthew 5, 13 through 16. This is Jesus talking. Okay. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's not good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Okay. Jesus uses some like very flowery language yeah. there. It's kind of poetic. It is. It's kind it of is. beautiful. Yes. What, what does that mean? <laughs> I guess that's the first question. I was like, yeah. what is that? Like salt and light. I feel like those are poignant. Like that's imagery that Jesus is using yeah. on purpose. So help flesh that out. Yeah. Well, I, here's what I love about this imagery and these words is that at the core of it, they're simple. Mm. Uh, salt and light, uh, two things that you and I can resonate with or anyone can actually resonate with. And so uh, at that time, uh, what the people then would have understood is that they didn't have refrigerators. And so if you wanted to preserve something, you packed it in salt, it kept it safe. Gotcha. But whenever you would eat it, it would be salty and it would make you thirsty. And so when Jesus is telling those followers mm. of that day, be salt, he's saying, hey, Make a compelling case for people to be interested in what you have to say by the way that you live. Cool. And so what would draw you close? Like, you know, when you're thirsty, you want to be drawn toward something. Mm -hmm. uh, typically for us, if we're thirsty, we want to be drawn toward water or something that replenishes us. Mm -hmm. And so how can you live your life in such a way that you're salt, that you draw mm -hmm. people towards you? Uh, and the same goes with Beautiful. light. Uh, think about it. Like if, if we shut off all the lights here and it was completely dark and we had a single flame going, we would be able to see that flame. Mm. So it doesn't matter how dark things are, uh, whenever there's light present, it eradicates the darkness. Mm. And so that's really the simplicity of it, is that if you live your life in a compelling way, although you draw people close, or you live your life in a way that is light for others to see, it's cool. well then they're gonna take notice and they wanna know what makes you live that way. I like that. It reminds me of, uh, I'm gonna be really honest, in my apartment, I had a little bit of a gnat problem for a while. <laughs> Cause I had like plants and whatever. And my friend told me to get one of those blue light yes. plug-in sticky trap things. And that thing worked so well. Cause at night I turn out all the lights, yes. but that little blue light is going. And yes. so in the morning I have all these gnats in there. I'm so gross. it's kind of the same idea, right? Isn't <laughs> yes. that like what Jesus was saying? Yeah, bad news for the gnats. Good news for you. Exactly. Yeah. I'm so grateful to Amazon for that one. <laughs> okay. So this is, um, another silly question, okay. but salt and light, like, I think that's cool. I'm with it. But it feels like work, <laughs> and it feels like a lot of work. Like, and why doesn't God just do miracles and like draw people to Him? Like, why, why do I have to do that? I guess. Yeah. Why is that a you and me thing? I don't know. Oh, I guess man. I'm asking like why broadly. Yeah. Does that um, gosh, and we could spend a lot of time <laughs> talking about that. Of like, why doesn't God just do yeah. these things? Um, so let me flip that a little bit and say, what if we viewed it from a position of how cool it is that God invites us? to live in such a way that we reflect his love for others. Hmm. So instead of thinking of it as a burden, think of it as an invitation to say, That's hey, cool. are you living your life in such a way that people are compelled to be drawn to you? Uh, are you living your life in such a way that um, people see your light and want to know, hey, what makes you you? And so I, it's really easy to get kind of stuck in that aspect of, yeah, it can be a burden and, and it's not always easy, right? Hmm. Like um, I've got two kids and... How old are they? Uh, they're seven and three. And so they're out watching this and they drive me bonkers, okay? Uh, I get it, you know, and, and I <laughs> so think most parents can realize that or even if you have siblings, you get it. Um, it's not always easy to love people that way. Um, but if we can put forth the effort to do such a thing, mm -hmm. 
and make people interested in why we're living that way, then the door opens up for us to say, I, I do this because Jesus loved me first, because God has a plan for me. Um, and the cool thing is I get to choose to do this. I'm not being forced to do it. Hmm. That's beautiful. So it sounds like you're pretty busy if you have a seven-year-old, three-year-old, full-time job, a lot going on. How Can you give us some examples, I guess, of how this plays out in real life for you in your own world? Like, how are you thinking about being salt and light in the context of your busy life? Yeah, um, I think the big thing for me is um, I like to be authentic and real. Like, I think that's the only way for people to realize what's actually going on in my life. You know, hmm. in the sense of like, I'm not going to say my kids are angels or not. Um, you know, I'm not going to say that life is perfect. It's not. Um, but I am going to look for those opportunities to live out this compelling life. And that may be, hey, stopping when someone has a question and actually listening to their question. That's good. Uh, we can get so busy that sometimes it's kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah. Or you yeah, ask yeah, the yeah. question, hey, how was your day? And a lot of times we don't want the actual answer. But what if we did? The what answer we, is fine. Yes, no. right? Yeah, the answer <laughs> that is, is always the answer. fine. No, um, but no, what if we pause just for that moment of, you know, just asking someone, hey, how was your day? Hmm. And actually listening for the answer. And we don't have to solve all their problems or um, we don't have to be the answer to everything that may be going on in their life. But we show that we're interested in them. Hmm. And maybe that just draws them closer a little bit to like, man, I'm so glad that person cared for me. And I'm so glad that person took the time to notice me. That's beautiful. Do you have examples of other people? I bet you know a lot of salt and light kind of people just because Jeremy's a pastor. I don't know if I said that, but you are, you're with a lot of churchy people. Yeah. Can you tell us about some people that do this really well that yeah. can inspire us a little bit? Totally. So uh, my favorite example of this is before I even knew who Jesus was. Okay. Like, uh, and this goes all the way back to high school, mm -hmm. which, you know, I guess I'm not that old, but the gray hair says I am. Um, so I had a friend named Beth. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Beth and I weren't the best of friends, but we were good friends. But the cool thing about Beth is that I always knew, and it wasn't just me, it was everyone around her. She just lived her life differently. And uh, she wasn't judgmental. Mm. Uh, she didn't make you feel bad for the things that you were doing or saying or whenever you were making mistakes, which I was making a lot of them. Uh, she didn't hold it over my head. Mm. And that relationship lasted for years in the sense of like, I knew that she was a friend that no matter what was happening in my life, I could go to. And she would meet me with grace and love uh, she'd also meet me with truth, but because she was so caring, um, mm. I had the opportunity to know that I was in a safe spot. And so that's, that's cool. like the, the pre-Jesus Jeremy version of someone who did this really well. And, and I'll forever remember that because like Beautiful. that was such a pivotal moment in my life. I mean, school age is, high school is. Uh, and she lived her life in such a way that it, it compelled me to be drawn near to her mm. uh, and really to want to be a better person when I was around her. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thanks, Beth. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Beth, That's a good one. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, girl. <laughs> um, okay, so I want to tell you about one, too. So okay. I have a friend, Casey, who I've known for a couple of years, and she is so good at dropping, like, truth bombs on people, like, encouraging wonderful truth bombs. Like, someone will be talking bad about themselves mm. or about, uh, you know, like, like, a negative body image thing or, like, just kind of a bad thing in their minds or whatever. And Casey will always be the person to go, like, you're so loved. Like what? Mm -hmm. Like God is so good. And like, and I just love that about her yes. because she's so good at, and not in a weird, like cringy way, but just in a, like she cares about you and she yes. wants you to see you, how God sees you. And I love that about her. Yeah. Like it makes me want to be around her. Cause I'm like, you are going to speak truth in a way that's so fun and fresh. And I love that. Yeah. It's really cool. Well, how cool would that be if we, you know, we, we left here and okay, our first step is let me go be an encourager to someone, yeah. just like Casey, right? It's like, let me let me find that person that maybe needs a small bit of encouragement so good. and just live that on their life for them. I love that. I love that. Good job, Casey. Casey, <laughs> Casey and Beth, that's what's up. Okay, so you guys might not know watching, but we're based in the DFW area, like northern suburbs. And Chase Oaks is like one church in a lot of locations. Yeah. And Jeremy is one of the pastors at one of those campuses. Yeah. And so what I, what's cool about this like salt and light conversation is that there's a lot of really practical things we can do where we're at to, yeah. to do that. Like there's a lot of like relational things like listening and being an encourager, but there's also like practical needs we can meet or ways that we can do good right here. So I know I'm putting you on the spot a little yes. bit, but if for people who are listening, who are like, okay, yeah, I'm into that. Can you tell us about maybe some opportunities yeah. or things we can be thinking about uh, and join in on? Yeah, so I'll use uh, three three examples, okay? Okay, and, let's and go. Wow, you're we're ready. We're going to start with P, you know, because that's what Stop pastors it. do is they rhyme things. Uh, do so pastors just think like that? Uh, yeah. Because you just pulled that out. Okay. You're constantly right. looking for that sermon illustration. <laughs> uh, so the third one is to be a pal. And all pal means is to be a friend. 
like and it. Uh, that's what Beth was to me and still is. That's what mm. Casey was to you or mm. still is. Uh, but we can always be that opportunity for others to trust us. And that just is what a friend is. Uh, the second one is to be a partner. Mm. And that is to find a organization or um, someone doing good in your own community, wherever it may be, that you partner with to continue to do good. And at Chase Oaks, we do like a really that. good job of that. There's partnerships that we partner with in all of our communities. Uh, but you can become a part of that. And it doesn't have to be through a church. It can be through a number of different opportunities. But just find a way to make a difference by partnering with an organization that's doing good in your community. Mm. Uh, and then the last thing I would say is to become a player. Uh, and not in that sense. Don't hit the player, hit the game. I know, I know. Uh, but be a player uh, in the church world on a, on a ministry. You know, whether that's Kids oh, that's Co. Cool. Or yeah. whether that's student ministry, whether that's production or first impressions, whatever it may be. Uh, you can be a team member to help us to create these environments that let people know they're loved. Hmm. So a pal, cool. a partner, a player. You were ready with that. That's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> and uh, hey, wherever you are, I bet there are opportunities to be a pal, a partner, a player in whatever city you're at. But if you are here, yeah. like, man, we'd love to talk to you or meet you or just help you think through that. So we'll have links in the description. This will go on YouTube um, or we can you can find out more if you're interested. But Jeremy, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Helping us be salt and light and yeah. uh, keeping that like the one thing. If you're going to do anything, just be salt and light this week. So. Uh, man, thanks for joining us for Mindful, and thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again next time.